William Blake was an 18th century esoterist known for his poetry and paintings. This famous etching was called the Ancient of Days, accepted by Freemasons as a representation of God putting order into the universe, was printed on copper plates using a style of etching which he claims was revealed to him by mystical forces. His illuminated works and engravings are only inches in size, yet they are meticulous in detail. Blake has always said his work was not meant to stand on its own, but rather be part of a titanic whole. In his poem entitled, Jerusalem, he makes mention of building the holy city in England's green and pleasant land. In 2008, months before his mysterious death, Rick Clay went on a popular radio program called Red Ice to explain why he thinks there's been an ongoing effort to recreate Zion on the very site of the 2012 Olympics. One, all the roads around the site seem to have biblical references to them. Two, the site itself is not only dead on to where two major ley lines intersect, but this particular piece of land has never been developed, a rarity in itself. Three, according to Clay, there's also an attempt by the royals to connect the lost bloodline of Christ to Prince William. In Dan Brown's poorly written yet popular book, The Da Vinci Code, he sets out to try and prove there was a child born of Mary Magdalene that carried the bloodline of Christ. While investigating the death of Diana, Clay discovers shrines and monuments to the late princess are riddled with esoteric symbols. The name of the bridge where Diana's accident took place is called Ponte de Lama. This means passage or bridge of the moon goddess. Also, the official name of her perfume was Isis. And how about this for a coincidence? Prince William's birthday is not only on June 21st, the summer solstice, but he also turns 30 in 2012. And according to the Bible, this is when Christ started his ministry.
And what are the chances that he would make the 1,000 spot in the Knight of the Garter, which is the parent organization to Freemasonry? Most people think the tradition of the Olympic torch goes back to the first games, but actually, the introduction of the flame came from what many people called the 1936 Nazi Olympics. On July 27, 1934, the DRL was set in place by the Third Reich in order to establish the official sports governing body of Germany. and appointed Dr. Carl Diem to oversee its operations. Diem had the perfect chance to implement his conception of bringing the flame of enlightenment to every country around the world.